Okay, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, leak detection on refrigeration, air conditioning systems, heat pumps, what have you. Uh, if you watched that uh, video last week from uh, Brian Orr uh, with HVACR School, uh, he had made mention that every system leaks. All systems will leak refrigerant at, at any time. Uh, typically it's, it's small and at a molecular level and not enough to cause problems with the system, but eventually just about every system is gonna have a problem with uh, refrigerant leaks and need to be uh, leak checked, repaired, and recharged. One of the ways we do that is with an electronic leak detector. Uh, this one is from uh, Infinicon. It's, a, it's kind of a mid-level uh, leak detector. They run anywhere from 200 to $1,000, depending on just how much how much you want to spend and uh, how good of a leak detector you want. Uh, most technicians have a good mid-level uh, refrigerant leak detector just like this. Again, this is something typically the uh, company provides to you because it is a big ticket item. Uh, it's a matter of uh, turning it on. These are uh, battery operated. They do take time to warm up and um, there's something about a, a diode that's in here that um, when you warm it up to a certain point, it will uh, detect refrigerant. Uh, if you can hear the little pump in here, that little pump is, is constantly running and pulling uh, air in this small little tube. There's also a small filter that you can replace in here. It uh, Just make sure that you don't get junk and gunk into your uh, leak detector. You also don't want to suck in water. So it's not always a good idea to uh, use a leak detector at the bottom of pipes just because water can drip in there and uh, get into the, uh, the system. So once this warms up, it'll start beeping. I've got two levels. I've got high and I've got low. Um, so high would be a high sensitivity, low would be low. If you have a really large leak and it's picking up, seems like it's picking up leaks everywhere, like this one, you can go to the lower setting and it gets a little less discriminating. And so you want to start looking at any fittings. I created a small leak in this unit. Maybe it's a little too big. Uh, if you want to just start looking at individual fittings on throughout the system, that would be good indicators of where leaks are at. Usually you can see oil at fittings or on coils. Those are always good indicators of where a leak would be at. You want to spend about two seconds on each point, and if you don't pick up a leak, sometimes there's a lot of false negatives with this also. You got to kind of go back and forth a bunch of times. Uh, the other important factor when you read the paperwork on this particular leak detector tells you you need to keep moving um, in that it's always comparing where you were the last time. So. Uh, if you hold it and there's a, definitely a leak and you hold it on that leak for a long period of time, eventually it'll stop sensing the leak because it's, it's not detecting a difference anymore. So the leak I have is I'm picking up around this dryer. That's most definitely a leak. It's on the lowest setting also. Once you let the sensor air out, just kind of get some fresh air and come back, you can check again and confirm that your leak is somewhere on this particular dryer. You can shut your uh, leak detector off so it doesn't drive you nuts. The next best refrigerant leak detection is these soap bubbles. Uh, it's just a very uh, specific blend of, uh, uh, of a soap and water and a different uh, specific viscosity that allows you to look for leaks and what happens when you find that leak, as you see these, these, these bubbles appear. Uh, the, the, this particular type of leak detector is very good at determining a very specific location of, uh, of a leak. And again, it's not always gonna be super obvious enough on there or not. You see little bubbles like that, you know that's 
specifically where your leak is at. At this point on something like this, I would get two wrenches. I would try to tighten these two fittings and re-leak check everything again. I would check my other side, re-leak, recheck that. Um, once I'm complete with that, I'm gonna go back to the rest of my system and re-leak re check and make sure that I've gotten all the leaks that are possibly in here. If it was a leak on a refrigerant line where I needed to rebraze, this would be the point I would recover all the refrigerant, rebraze it, pressure check it again, leak check it again, and if I had no leaks, put the system in a vacuum, and once you've got a proper vacuum, recharge the system, and you're, uh, you're up and running. These leak detectors typically come in nice cases. I highly recommend you leave the leak detector in its case. It just heavily it extends the life of the uh, piece of equipment and something that is this expensive, you definitely want to take care of, okay? Um, so that's it on electronic leak detection.